Every job requires a variety of tasks during a given day. Maybe yours includes meeting with clients, preparing a presentation, or collaborating with team members on an important project. No matter what you're doing, staying on top of all the tasks you need to perform is crucial. By organizing them effectively, you can plan ahead for tomorrow and improve your productivity at the same time. At the most basic level, the Tasks feature of Microsoft Outlook helps you create lists of task-related items. But dig a little deeper and you'll find they do much more for you than simply holding your to-do list. In the next section, I'll show you tips for using task features that will help you stay better organized and keep you steps ahead of your deadlines. So next up, I'm going to show you a little trick to streamline your to-do list so it excludes all those flags associated with emails that might be littering up your view. I'll then demonstrate multiple ways to view your tasks as well as how to sort them with unique categories that work in tandem with our time management system. And then I'll walk you through how to quickly delegate tasks and throw in a neat shortcut to attach someone to a task. You probably noticed one of the frustrating things about assigning follow-up flags to email messages is that Outlook will then automatically include all those flagged items in your to-do list. I bet it looks a little something like this. So next, I'm going to show you how to create a filter on your task list so that you'll only see the tasks you've created and not those associated with an actionable email. So here is an example of a littered to-do list containing endless email follow-up flags. Of course I'll want to clean this up. So, if I want to filter my list to only show my tasks, I'll right-click on the column heading and select View Settings. I'll choose Filter and go to the Advanced tab. And in the first field here, I'll type Message Class. In the Condition drop-down, I'll select Contains. And in the Value field, I'll type Task. And then click Add to List. And then click OK. Now, when this filter is set, I will not see all those email follow-up flags I've assigned. I'll only see the specific tasks that I've created. Much cleaner. A truly nice addition to Outlook 2010 is the to-do bar. Since most people spend the majority of their time in email view, Microsoft introduced the to-do bar to display your calendar, appointment reminders, and list of tasks even when you're not using the task feature in Outlook. This gives you a simple snapshot of your day without having to switch between different views. If you want more space to view your email, you can always minimize the to-do bar by clicking on the arrow on the top left of the bar. I can also easily add a task in the to-do bar by just simply typing in the task here. So I'll type call Hunter about the agenda and then hit enter on the keyboard. By default, the task will be scheduled for today, but I could always right-click on the task and just choose another date. Another clever way to view my tasks is in the calendar view. Here I can expand the task pane at the bottom and for each day I can see the tasks that I've been assigned for that day. I can easily schedule a task by just clicking on the task and pulling it into my calendar. A good rule of thumb is to do this with tasks that take more than 5 or 10 minutes. Other tasks, such as quick phone calls and emails that I have to send, I just keep in my task list and I take care of them in between appointments or if I need to take a break from what I'm doing. If I'm not able to complete a task on the day I've assigned it, I'll reschedule it by moving it over to another day when I have more time. And to mark a task as complete, I just click on the flag. To get a complete view of all your tasks, click on the Tasks button in the Navigation pane. If this isn't visible, it's likely because you need to move the separator bar up. The default view when you're in Tasks is the simple to-do list. This is a summary of all your to-dos, whether they are emails you've marked to follow up on or tasks you've created in Outlook. By clicking Arrange By and then selecting Folder, you can see exactly from where the follow-ups are derived. So here I can see that I have three email follow-ups from my action folder. One from my read folder, 
and I have a task here from our team event. And then I have a number of non-email related tasks that I've created or have been assigned. So to find the task view that works best for you, click on the View tab on the ribbon. From here, you can quickly switch between views. The most common is, of course, the due date. Here, I can easily reschedule tasks by dragging and dropping them or by right-clicking on the follow-up flag and selecting another date. Something else I find quite useful is to sort my to-do list by category. The use of categories is very personal. Some people group their tasks by type, such as phone call, errand, or email. Others create categories for the project name they're working on or by the names of clients they're working with. I prefer to organize my categories by location. Since categories are the same across all Outlook views, I have categories set up for my emails such as urgent and when possible and when response arrives. But I've also added categories for tasks based on their location. This is a terrific time management technique that allows you to quickly tackle tasks based on where you are at that given time. By organizing my tasks this way, I'm able to see what I'm able to do at that given time. For instance, this method clearly separates my personal tasks designated by at home for those tasks I can only do at home versus at work or at meeting categories for those items I'll need to address at the office or for a specific meeting. I also include at phone or at email and those categories are particularly helpful when I'm commuting and I'm able to draft some quick emails and when I'm between appointments and can make a quick phone call. You'll also note that I prefaced my tasks with the at symbol. This keeps my tasks together at the top and ensures that they're not confused with my email follow-up. If you decide you like the idea of assigning categories to tasks, you'll also have the added bonus of displaying your to-do bar in a much more friendly way. By clicking on the arranged by header in the to-do bar and selecting categories, your tasks will now be arranged by category. To collapse all of the headers or category names, right click on one of the category headers and select Collapse All Headers. When you collaborate on a team or manage the work of others, you may want to delegate a task or two to someone else and keep track of its progress. Outlook makes it nice and easy to create and track a task that you assign. Here's how. To assign a task to someone, you have to first create a new task from the Home tab and in the Manage Task section of the new task, select Assign Task. In the To box, enter the name or the email address of the person you want to assign the task to. I'm going to assign the task to Cameron. Then write the subject of the task, so here I'll type Complete Executive Summary. I'll pick a due date and enter a description. So here I'll type, finalize the draft summary for review at the client meeting next week. I'll assign the category at meeting since we all follow the same structure here at Surface 7. And I'll keep these two boxes checked. This means that I'll have an updated copy of this task in my task list and also that I'll get a status report when the task is complete. I'll send this to Cameron and when he accepts this I'll get an email notification. You'll notice that the tasks that I've assigned to others have a different icon. And if I click on one of them, I can see the updated status of this task. And so lastly, for Outlook tasks, I have a quick tip for those of you who create tasks to call someone at a later time and then find yourself searching your contacts at the last minute for their information. Flagging a contact is an efficient way to attach all of a person's contact information to your task item. This way it's handy when you need it. To flag a contact, go to your contacts list and right click the contact and select your follow up date. The flagged contact is then displayed on your task list and your to do bar and also contains links to the information in the person's contact card. So here's a recap of what we've learned in the task section. We learned how to create a custom filter so that the to-do bar excluded all those follow-up flags assigned to emails. We saw some simple and helpful ways to view tasks right inside the to-do bar or alongside your calendar appointments 
and most comprehensively within the task window itself. That's where I demonstrated several options to manage your tasks more efficiently, whether it's sorting by due date or status, category, or other criteria. I then recommended a system of labeling your tasks by location-based categories, which bundles your to-do list according to where you can act on them. We then delegated the task to someone and saw the benefit of being able to track their status and obtain an email progress report from the assigned task. We then closed up by learning a quick technique for attaching a person's contact information to an item on your to-do list.